Alrighty y'all, today we're taking a look at our lecture on spectroscopy. In this room we're going to be looking a lot at the different types of spectra. Uh, like we have our continuous spectra, this is our emission spectra, and here's our absorption spectra. Right. Uh, specifically we're going to be talking about our imaginary element here, orangium, uh, which has four energy levels with different energies. Right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw an energy level diagram for our atom of orangium, with these energy levels. And I like to think about the energy levels as floors in a building, right? So if I draw my building, we start at our ground floor or our ground state and have n equals one, so I have zero EV, right? I think of my energies as heights in my building, right? I'm zero meters off the ground, I'm on my first floor. I go up, oh, that is not to scale. Go up three, that is not, there we go. I go up three meters, all right, that gets me to my second floor. That's a three EV. Go up another two. There's my third floor at five EV. And my last one's at 5.5 EV, that's my fourth floor, right? And as I'm moving around in my building, I'm gonna imagine kind of like I'm in an elevator, right? and that's getting me between my different energy levels. I can't push a button in the elevator and get to half of an energy level. I can only push the button from the first floor, I can only push a button to go to any of the other floors. If I push the button on the first floor button on the first floor, nothing's gonna happen. All right, so we're going to talk about the possible transitions, right? Going from higher to lower, in this case, we're going to set, start at 4. From 4, we can go to 3, to 2, or to 1, all right? If I'm standing on my elevator on the fourth floor, I can push the button and go to three different floors. I could push the fourth floor button, but nothing would happen. Nothing would change, so we don't care about that. Then from the third floor, right? The only way I could go down is I can go to the second or the first. I could go back up to the fourth floor, but we already said four to three, and the difference in height between four and three is going to be the same as the difference in height from three to four, just in the opposite direction. So we're going to have three to two and three to one. And then our last one, that's going to be going from our second floor down to our first. Same reasons, right? We already have two to four and two to three. So all we need is two to one, right? And our energy difference is gonna be like our height difference in our building. I go up three meters, that gets me to the second floor. I go up another two, gets me to the third floor, and I go up that 0 0.5, it's gonna get me to the fourth floor. So if I'm going from four to three, uh, my difference, energy difference, that's gonna be my 5.5 meters up minus the five. 0.5, right? Then I do the same thing, 4 to 2, that's going to be 2.5, uh, yeah, 2.5, and 4 to 1, that's going to be 5.5, right? Because I'm going all the way down to my ground floor. EV, 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 units are important. Um, 3 to 2, it's going to be 2 EV, 3 to 1, that's going to be 5 EV. And 2 to 1, that's going to be 3 EV. I have all these memorized by now. All right. So, again, this is just our difference in height between the floors. If I'm going up, it's going to be a positive. I'm increasing my height. I'm going down. I'm decreasing my height by that same amount. And now, which color are they? All right. So I'm going to look at my different energies of photons here and look at my spectrum and say, what color is it? All right. So my 0 0.5, if I go all the way up, well, it starts kind of boring because this is off the end of the spectrum. So that's going to be in the infrared zone. No idea if I spelled that right, but it's fine. And now skipping around just a little bit, we have 5.5 .5 and 5. I'm just looking at the spectrum. I know it only goes up to 3.5. Anything beyond that, that's going to be ultraviolet. So 5.5 and 
five. They're both in the ultraviolet range. I definitely spelled that one wrong. Something like that. Ultraviolet. All right, because that's higher than our visible spectrum. Then we have 2.5, 2, and 3. So if we look, 2.5 is about here. It's kind of this greenish blue. I'm going to call it scion. If you say anything in this range of like, oh, this greenish blue or like a light blue, it'll all be right. I'm just being specific about it, right? 2.5 is scion. Our 2 is going to be this kind of burnt orange red. Again, if you say anything close to that, it's fine. And then 3 is somewhere in here. It's kind of in between, but it's going to be like a purplish color. So we come down here. We said my 2.5 was a scion. 2 was kind of that orangish red. And 3 was purple. Okay. And I kind of touched on this, but is this photons that the orangium could absorb or emit or both? It's both. The only difference, right? If I'm absorbing a photon, I'm, I'm getting that energy. I'm increasing my energy. So I'm going to be increasing my height. Right? I'm going up in my elevator. If I'm emitting a photon, I'm getting rid of that energy. So I'm decreasing my energy. So I'm decreasing my height. So I'm going down in my elevator. But the steps are the same. If I go up from 2 to 3, that's absorbing a 2EV photon. If I go down from 3 to 2... That's emitting a 2EV photon. So it's going to be absorbing and emitting. All right. And now we have our tube of orangium excited by an electric current, like a fluorescent light, or like the, those tubes that we've been working with in lab uh, that we make you turn off so they don't burn out. We're running electric current through various gases and seeing the uh, emission spectrum uh, spectra with our uh, those plastic spectrometers, those triangle things. All right, so now we're going to draw the lines that we would see. Well, we said that three of them aren't going to be visible, right? We can't see ultraviolet and we can't see infrared unless you're a snake, because I think snakes can see infrared, but we're not snakes. So we're going to draw each one. I'm going to start with my 2.5, and I just happen to have all of the colors already, like, matched out. There's my line for that. All right, and we said, all right, and then if we go over to our burnt orange at two, right there. And then we come over to this purple. That's around three, somewhere in there. Again, three isn't perfect. And I know you don't have the same cool colors that I do because uh, you're writing in pencil on paper. I'm just doing this because I'm being fancy. If you just mark it with your pencil, it's perfectly fine. And now we just have to say which en uh, energy transition, energy level transitions caused each one. So we said our purple one, 3 EV from 2 to 1. So from 2 to 1. Our scion was 2.5 EV from 4 to 2. 4 to 2. And then we have our 2 EV, our burnt orange, 3 to 2. Okay, so here's our emis emission spectrum. All right, and are these bright lines on a dark background or dark lines on a bright background? And we've seen this. We know that when we look at these tubes of gas in lab, we see it's all dark except for these lines that show up. Fortunately, we can't have you draw with pencil on a black background because we won't be able to see it. So we made it light. But really what it would look like is something. If I filled in the background dark. Okay, I... And then I took my wavelengths, put them back on. This is our emission spectrum that we would see. Now I'm being fancy with all my 
everything I'm doing here. This is just to illustrate, right? For a mission, we don't have any light that's present. Like, that's why we turn off all the lights in labs so you can more clearly see these ones. But we don't have any light present, that's why it's all black, but we can't. Uh, but our element is emitting these specific wavelengths, so that's what we can see. All right, so these would be bright lines on a dark background. All right. So now let's move on from emission and start talking a bit about absorption. All right. So in this case, we're going to have a full spectrum of light from a continuous spectrum of light from a hot object. So that's going to look something like this continuous spectrum up here. And uh, what we're doing is we're taking that full spectrum, our full rainbow, and we're passing it all through our cloud of orangium. And we have to figure out what's coming out the other side. So our two EV photons passing through it, well, that's one of our energy jumps that we can make. So those are going to get absorbed. Three to two, any, uh, any of the atoms on our second floor would absorb that two EV photon and jump up to the third floor. Right? They would increase their height by that two EV, or increase their energy. Right? So they would absorb those two EV photons because that's one of the jumps that we can make between floors. And any other photons that would behave the same way, all of these... Uh, energy differences that we have here, right? The only ones we'd see being absorbed would be the ones in the visible spectrum, right? 2.5, 2, and 3. But the other ones would still exist and still be absorbed as well, okay? Uh, so our answer to this is it would be absorbed and also all the other energy differences. I'm not going to write all that out, though. Uh, what would the orangium gas do with a 1.5 EV photons? And 1.8 and 3. Point pi EV. We have pi, it's a little rounded. It's 3.14159265358. I could keep going. I'm not going to bore you with that. But uh, any of these, well, these aren't anywhere on our energy differences. Right? If I was on the first floor and I wanted to absorb that 1.5 EV photon, that would leave me stuck between floors. I couldn't press a button in my elevator and get stuck between floors. So I was on the second floor, same thing. Going up 1.5 would leave me in between floors. If I was on the third floor, that would shoot me out the top of the building, like Willy Wonka's elevator. And we are not in the chocolate factory. So we're not going to go flying out the top of our building. So 1.5, 1.8, and pi, those aren't on our energy differences. So we cannot absorb those. So these would just pass right through. We're not going to absorb any of those. All right. So again, here's our continuous spectrum from a hot object. And what photon energies would be absorbed? Well, we kind of already said this, that we're going to absorb the same energies that we emitted. So if I bring this down, I already had it duplicated. I'm just going to scale it down because the spectrums are different sizes. Right there. Okay. So these are just marking the wavelengths or the energies of photons that would be absorbed when we pass the full spectrum, all of this, through it. And how that's going to look, right? Before I was saying we have our black background because there's no light present and we have these bright lines. Well, now we have all of the light present, but some of it's being removed from what we're seeing. These two are a little... There, that looks better. All right? So, if we're removing light, it's just going to be black lines on our continuous spectrum. All right? So, we have the continuous spectrum. We're absorbing these, so now we can no longer see them. All right? The relationship between the bright lines and the dark lines... I, I kind of told said that already because I just copied the lines from up here to put them down here. They're at the same energies. They're at the same wavelengths. The only difference is when I go up in my floor, am I up in my energy level? I'm absorbing. And when I go down, that's when I'm emitting photons. 
right? And if we saw dark lines at 2, 2.5, and 3 EV in the spectrum of the sun, what could we conclude about the sun's atmosphere? Well, we just said our absorption spectrum from orangium is at 2, 2.5, and 3 EV. And so if we saw something like this coming from the sun, we could say orangium is in the sun because we know it absorbs at these specific energies. So it has to be there because we're not seeing those specific energies. All right, so we can say that orangium is in the sun's atmosphere. All right. I hope you found this video at least a little bit helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions about this or anything else that you want me to try to explain. And I'll do my best to try to explain it because I guess Sydney explains stuff.